Hello and thank you for joining me today at Sabo Latino Global. I have a special guest here today. His name is Christopher Garcia. And I met Christopher at the Capicu Poetry event where he recited that infamous poem about the one-footed pigeon. Christopher also works with the Urban Youth Alliance and Bronx Connect in the Bronx, New York. Um, Christopher, mm -hmm. thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Monica. Christopher, I'd like to, you know, tell the viewers more about like what inspired you um, to start writing poetry and how did you uh, get involved with these spoken word events? Mm. That's interesting. Um, poetry has always been something I've done, though I was doing it in a different form. I was emceeing at one time and, uh, and I just outgrew that, but I still had the passion for writing. I've always been a writer, so I love to write, I love to express myself through poetry. and. Um, I started doing that and I started going to different events and I met particular people who led me to other people who had grander events and found out that I could perform as well. So that mm -hmm. was, and one of them was, you know, one of the headliners who, who was at the Capicu event that we met each other. Mm -hmm. so, Sandra Maria Aceves. So, right, mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. I actually was, uh, I got introduced to Papo, who was the uh, like founder of Capicu. And mm, that was, yeah, was, and it was a beautiful thing. It was, you know, mm. and I go, now I, I'm a regular there. So. It's definitely a great way for, for people to express themselves mm. and influence others, definitely positively influence others. Um, another thing you noted when we met at the Capicu was that mm. you um, are studying to be a pastor and mm. you're able to, um, you know, implement and integrate those skills in the work you do today at the Urban Youth Alliance. Yes, yes. And that's um, poetry and my pastoral calling, ironically, they go hand in hand. You know, um, when I realized that I was called into pastoral by, mm -hmm. by God, obviously, you know, it led to, it led to me just tucking away with God and becoming, you know, just really educated in the Bible, just me and him, and that led me to academics, and I actually went and studied with um, New York Theological Seminary. And between that and learning different traits of public speaking, harmonetics, projection, and all that, it also coincides with poetry and how you have to do those, and I had practiced those techniques in your, in your poetry, so um, learning how to preach and learning how to project in poetry was something that went hand in hand, ironically. Mm -hmm. really cool. And what led you from, I guess, you know, your poetry path along to your professional career path at the Urban Youth Alliance? Wow. Well, what I, the poetry was separate. My, um, I'm a counselor on four different levels. I have four different certifications for counseling. Um, one of them is youth counseling. So that's what I became as um, working for Urban Youth Alliance. The organization is a Christian-based organization, and. The division that I work for is Bronx Connect. So these, this pr program is for court-involved youth, and the court-involved youth uh, have cases, and what it is is the courts give them an opportunity to not be in prison and to come to our program, and that's where I'm able to counsel them on the various different areas of counseling that I use, but one of them is pastoral. So I'm able to sit down with them, and unlike any other profession that or any other form of counseling that I've been in, mm -hmm. um, this job enables me to speak about God and to bring God into the equation, introduce these kids to the idea that, you know, that God is in their life and that God is working in, in their life. And that there is a way out and it doesn't Absolutely. have to be a revolving door. Absolutely. The purpose Absolutely. is to keep the kids out of Absolutely. the system. And well, I, you know, God I is hear that, that there's a pretty good success rate with this program. Absolutely, we have a tremendous success rate. I don't know the exact numbers right now for the latest ones, but at least I see, if I was to come off the top of my head, at least 75 to 85 percent of the children never go back. Welcome back, and now Chris and I are going to work on mixing all of these wonderful flavors to blend this shrimp ceviche. This recipe is a different variation. I'm sure that the people from Peru and Ecuador and Mexico have their own version. But I wanted this to taste more like a tropical, you know, appetizer. You know, something that you get when you're in a, you know, one of those beautiful resorts in Punta Cana or something. Mm -hmm. 
So pretty much if you want to mix this up together for um, a serving that yields about like four to six servings, I'd say use about two pounds of shrimp, six to eight limes, one to two juicing oranges, and I added a little different flair to it with some pineapple juice. I would say about two to three ounces of pineapple juice because we're also going to add some grilled pineapples that's going to add even some more flavor mm -hmm. and texture. Mm -hmm. um, I like spice so I prefer to add a jalapeno. You could even use a serrano chili if you can find them. They're very hard to find in some areas. A has avocado, one is sufficient. One cucumber, one tomato, both of them must be seeded. Um, I like to use the pineapple, we're going to grill that towards the end. And we're going to use about like a handful of cilantro. And since Chris and I did a lot of the chopping, mostly him, I had to put him to work. You know, that's what we do when people come and visit in my house. Exactly. So I have pretty much like a big handful of cilantro there. So he's gonna chop it up finely, mm -hmm. and we're gonna mix it all together. Um, what I did initially was I took the two pounds of shrimp times three because I have an audience here and they all want to get a little bit of taste mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. when it's done. It's gonna be good. So I times it by three. So we start out with the two pounds of shrimp and I added about three bags. I poached it lightly in some boiling water so um, some people would prefer to allow the shrimp to cook in the natural citrus juices of the lime and orange but I poached it for three minutes in boiling water added it to some uh, ice so it could cool off and then all the juices that I strain, the lime, the orange juice, the pineapple, I soak the shrimp in it with the chilies and some red onion. I'd say use about a quarter cup of finely chopped red onion and that's what you have here. It's been marinating for I'd say about an hour, a little over an hour. You want it nice and cold. And we're going to add everything to it here. And typically before you serve it, you let it sit about 30 minutes so it reaches room temperature. So I say Chris is doing a pretty good job here with looks the like cilantro. Doing, looks like I know what I'm doing. Huh? Yeah, doing it's doing pretty good. <laughs> we also have some um, crushed garlic. This is something that I added. I say for this recipe about for two pounds of shrimp, you want to use maybe like one, one and a half teaspoons of crushed garlic, depending on your preference. And one flair I added to it is a horseradish mustard for that little tanginess. And we're going to use some extra virgin olive oil and cilantro for garnish. Also, depending on your taste, some people might want to put an additional, some additional salt, kosher salt, <laughs> and we'll just sprinkle some to taste. On top of that, we have some cucumber, red pepper, a little green pepper that we chopped up. For the, this recipe, for the two pounds of shrimp, I say use about one to one and a half red peppers, one green pepper, and one red onion, and one small cucumber. Sounds like a lot, I know. What I'll do is I'll put it all in one good slide for you to follow if you want to experiment with this recipe on your own. Well, well since I'm new to cooking, you know, I'm wondering why, why do we do that? Why would we grill up the pineapple? That's something that Well, it tenderizes it a little and it brings out the natural sweetness of the pineapple. Mm -hmm. Some people think that, you know, it will caramelize it a little more or it'll just add a little more sweetness. Like something you think of being served when you're on vacation, right? But you can have vacation right at home. That's what I do. Staycation. It's called staycation. Staycation. Nice. <laughs> well, Chris, I think we did a wonderful job here. I'm hungry. It looks so appetizing. We added a little cilantro for mm -hmm. garnish. My friend Janet brought over these wonderful tortilla chips for scooping. So I think we're ready to eat our ceviche. I can go in because I've been really like holding back. You've been holding, holding back. I think he has that big cucharón yeah. somewhere nearby ready to scoop it. 
So I recommend that everybody try this tropical shrimp ceviche. You won't be disappointed. And I look forward to seeing you at my next show. Who knows? If you have any suggestions, write, type them, you know, blog us. Let us know what you want.